Welcome to the Burdock Group podcast, where today we're going to discuss the regulatory pathways to food additive petition and generally recognized as safe dossier. U.S. regulations uh, on food ingredients is unique in the U.S. as we rely on um, experts qualified by scientific training and experience to evaluate those safety needs. So here at the Burdock Group, we're a safety and regulatory consulting firm with 35 years of experience in safety and regulatory compliance. Joining me today is Dr. Eric Hedrick. Morning, doctor. How are you? I'm doing well, Brian. How are you doing? Good. Doing good. So uh, today we're going to break down the two pathways to regulatory compliance. And starting that off uh, is going to be defining what a food ingredient is. So a food ingredient is really anything that's directly added to food, whether intentional or not. Uh, the FDA determines um, any ingredient that is added to food as a food additive, which is any substance intended use of which results in reasonable or expected to result in the substance becoming a component or otherwise affecting the characteristics of food. Now, there are exceptions to this, um, such as generally recognized as safe mm -hmm. uh, substances, um, substances that are prior sanctioned by the FDA or the FDA gave their seal of approval. Mm -hmm. On the safety of the ingredient before 1958, um, dietary ingredients, uh, color additives, um, but specifically we're going to focus on um, food, food additives and the food additive petition route, or you can do a generally recognized as safe uh, determination through a GRASS dossier, in which GRASS substances are not considered food additives. Right, yeah, and we start there because there's a lot of information out there online that really doesn't navigate um, your your team or your department where to go, right? Whether you've included this contingency into your plan of building the project or somebody in legal said, hey, you've got to go get this approved, registered right through the FDA. Yes. So we start with the definition that kind of lays the, the foundation uh, for the food additive petition as well as the grass dossier. So on the next slide, we're going to really look at the, the matrix that shows what the uh, the two uh, options are. Um, so you can see you start with the candidate ingredient um, and then you look at either a grass review or food additive petition. We're going to start with a food additive petition because that's oftentimes the least path, um, complex path, Definitely. Uh, you could say. Um, and what are some of the reasons behind the food additive petition? So a lot of people wonder why anybody would do a food additive petition as opposed to a grass dossier. And there are specific instances in which a food additive petition is required. For instance, if the ingredient is going to be irradiated in any way, FDA requires that a food additive petition uh, be utilized to uh, demonstrate the safety of the ingredient. Another instance is if the substance has known potential genotoxicity, intercalates DNA, interacts with it, reacts with the DNA or any of the uh, nucleic acid bases, um, if it exhibits any kind of reproductive toxicity, um, that will require food additive petition. And another example is um, if it has a known extensive or uh, potential environmental impact. So one of the key differences between a food additive petition and grass dossier is a food additive petition requires an environmental assessment. So a lot of uh, ingredients that contain halogens, such you know, chlorine, bromine atoms, um, FDA will uh, require to undergo a, a food additive petition. And specific ingredients that could have, that are so different or are so unknown that there's nothing like it, FDA would, may require to undergo a food additive petition. There's also, um, there are 21 CFR 184, um, any ingredients listed under 184 B2 that if it doesn't, if the ingredient has specific limitations, these are ingredients that are affirmed as safe, um, then it would have to undergo a food additive petition. So those are just specific examples. Most instances, we don't um, run into those kind of ingredients a lot. Most of the time, 90% of the time, we can do a genetic regulation. It's a safe definition or a determination. But a food additive petition and a grass dossier, I need to stress this uh, that they both have the same standard of safety, meaning the reasonable certainty of no harm. Um, the difference is being that the amount of data is much more extensive with a food data petition. The time for review is much longer. 
those estimates are uh, three to five. That's very uh, idealistic. Yeah. As you can see, aspartame and Alestra took 12, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Yikes. So most people don't want to go that route. They don't have to. Um, and another important uh, difference is that the FDA it says that you could provide data and you don't have to necessarily publish the data. However, they're going to publish their ruling in a federal register and the data most likely not is going to become publicly available and how much you can actually redact versus not is probably not going to be as much as you'd like. So, you know, don't, don't look too much into the whole not being able to publish the same data. Right. right. So food additive petition is certainly one route, um, but let's focus in on the grass dossier. Um, and there's two avenues, right? Um, and the first up is the history of use. Right. So um, the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act was passed in 1938, and all ingredients were um, anything added to the food was considered a food additive. Then in, in 1958, there was a need for a less doctrinized uh, way of reviewing safety of ingredients. Um, it was uh, self governance. Essentially, the people could look at the ingredients and evaluate the safety in their own hands. And it comes down to what are known as qualified experts. And these are people that are qualified by scientific training and experience to evaluate the safety of the ingredient. Um, and a lot of ingredients before 1958 have a history of use. They've been used for thousands of years, hundreds of years. Nobody questions the safety of it. So they have that prior history of use. Um, and it says that it needs well-documented information and that FDA has to agree with this uh, use before 1958. Well-documented meaning scientific evidence, documentation that verifies the safety of, of the ingredient. Mm -hmm. More likely than not, when we do these dossiers, we have to go through the scientific procedures uh, because most of these companies, they have new ingredients or um, ingredients that they want to use in a specific way. Because a grass, it's not a approve all for all uses of, for everything. It's a specific use at a, a specific amount. So if you go outside of that specific use or a specific amount, then you, you're not grassing. Okay? So that's another key characteristic that needs to be emphasized with these dossiers. The next offer, the next route by scientific procedure. So this is what we do quite often here at the firm, right? Absolutely. And what we'll normally do is we'll do something called a feasibility assessment and we'll determine what is needed in order for you to um, achieve the, and uh, compose uh, a grass dossier to get a determination of safety. Um, so you need the same safety standard, get a reasonable certainty as a food additive petition. And a lot of times you'll need to do a 90 day study. If it's for humans and rodents, if it's for uh, an animal, you, you need to do it in a specific target animal. Um, more likely than not, you're going to have to do in vivo and in vitro uh, genetic toxicity testing. Um, if it's a protein, you'll more likely than not have to do allergenicity testing. Um, and you'll have these safety tests that you'll have to conduct. But on top of that, you'll need to determine the estimated daily intake. So how much of this ingredient is going to be added to foods and what kind of foods. And we have a proprietary software that's based on the What We Eat in America USDA uh, survey database, the NHANES database. And through this software, we can determine the estimated daily intake. Um, you provide the food categories and then, of course, the specific amounts of that ingredient which you want to add to food. We could determine the estimated daily intake. Um, you also have to show stability. Um, you know, the uh, show that it's not going to break down when it's stored um, and detailed manufacturing, explain how it's going to be done and it has to be reproducible, along with reproducible and meetable specifications for heavy metals, microbials. Um, specifications can vary depending on the ingredient and what's in it. And um, But more likely than not, you're going to do the heavy metals and then the microbials. Um, and then we put this into a dossier and then the dossier is sent off to the expert panel. And uh, as I said, the expert panel, these are qualified experts in training and experience. They will determine whether or not that they agree with the uh, conclusion that the ingredient is grass. And then once that is done, then you become federally compliant and you can use your ingredient um, in the intended use at the intended use level. 
There's an additional step after that called a grass notification, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go into that. Right, right. Yeah. So um, here at the firm, the Burdock Group, we're a one-stop shop to help navigate you through the challenges of uh, getting your product to the market um, in a safe and efficient manner. Um, and would love to listen to any of the challenges or questions that you have. So please send those to us at info at burdockgroup.com. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.